Hi, everyone. Welcome to our table talk with Pastor John. Hey, everyone. We're continuing our look into the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. And today we head into Europe. Yes, first time. It's, it's a, a but, new place and sure. God is up to new things. Not, not a really nice European vacation, though, that many of us would want to take. No, <laughs> no, there's a, a few twists and turns that yeah. wouldn't be vacationish. No, not at all. Yeah. So help us to, to get a hold of the impact of getting into a new place. And now we have this new form, the, the place of prayer. Yeah, so uh, if you didn't, uh, if you weren't able to watch the um, sermon yet, just interesting. This shows you how small a Jewish population there would have been because you need ten men, Jewish men, to launch a formal synagogue. So there's only places of prayer where there's not a synagogue. So this just shows you it's a very small community, and even a lot of the people in the place of prayer are not Jews. Mm -hmm. They are people who've converted to Judaism or are checking it out. Mm -hmm. So it's like very, very small numbers of people who even share sort of a worldview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the place where this ongoing movement of peace and hope totally. are going to take root. Yeah, well, it's wild. Like if you trace it, it starts in this place of prayer and then Lydia and then, as we talked about, a demon high slave woman and then a jailer. And then 11 plus years later, there's this vibrant church, mm -hmm. which Paul writes the book of Philippians to. Right. And it's really interesting how much suffering there is here, but he writes a book on joy. So, right. Yeah. Right. And so uh, Lydia becomes our first focus. And you make an important point about how sh she comes into the faith. Yeah, like educated, entrepreneurial, smart, wealthy. But it's, I find it fascinating at this moment that the scripture is really clear. God opened her mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we all aren't comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, uh, people who become Christians aren't smarter than other people or are not more intellectually engaged. Mm -hmm. I know a ton of intellect intellectually engaged or spiritually open people who never meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God has to do work we just can't naturally do. Right. He just has to. Right. Yeah, right. 100%. And so it's all about the activity of God's Spirit through Paul and Silas. Sure. And that's what attracts the attention of the demon in the slave woman. Yeah, which is, again, when you sort of sit back and realize how close Delphi is and how this was like a heart of occultism and like, you know, major politicians and religious leaders all came to this region to uh, know the future. And then this woman is functioning in the same way. Like it's just, like we talk about all the time through the book of Acts, this is the first time the gospels now in Europe and what happens? There's an all-out turf war. And interestingly, in this slave woman, the same function is happening here as actually is known globally. Right. So it's a big clash. Right. So it's bar Jesus all over again. Yes. Different particulars. But, yeah. But the same kind of dynamic. Same thing again. Okay. And, uh, and it's interesting that in that turf war, what emerges is perhaps not direct confrontation, but confusion. Yeah, I for years read this and was confused. I didn't understand why the demon kept saying, you should listen to these men. They're proclaiming the Most High God. They'll tell you to get saved. And like I outlined in the sermon, this, this is the brilliance of evil. It's, it's the brilliance of all untruth in the mm -hmm. world because, mm -hmm. because you know what the demonic being says, Most High God, like I shared in the sermon, multiple deities were called Most High Gods. Mm -hmm. So it actually knew neutralize the gospel. And I just would say, we see this all the time, there's truth in something, but so much error that no one can actually find their way home. Right, right. And the sad thing is that her deliverance, her new freedom, mm -hmm. uh, brings about terrible things. Terrible things. And I, I think, you know, and maybe you wanna talk about this in connect groups. There's this belief almost when Jesus shows up and do a, does a really beautiful thing, everyone's gonna be excited. Mm -hmm. Like when Legion was cast out, everyone mm -hmm. said, leave the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when Jesus healed in the synagogue, they said, you did it on the wrong day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. like, I think we have to come to a, a fresh understanding that when Jesus does a really beautiful thing, most people won't think it's beautiful. Okay. And they don't just hold that opinion. Oh no, they, they beat get, him and throw him in jail. Yeah, they get brutal. Yeah, they, really brutal. And because again, in Roman society, peace was the thing to be guarded. Order was the thing to be guarded. And so like, it appeared like these two were causing disorder. So the government said, don't you dare. Mm -hmm. And of course, interestingly, like Paul and Silas don't 
pull out their politics cards, even though they could have. Mm -hmm. And I would say, humanly, should have, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is very uncomfortable for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they're in jail, they're in irons, yeah. they're, they're no doubt experiencing a lot of pain because yeah. you've open been wounds, beaten, bleeding. open wounds, yeah. how do you lean back, you you know, all that Awful. stuff. Uh, and yet they're singing. Yeah, and the prisoners are listening to them. Uh -huh. Yeah, like it's, a, a, again, I think we have to like do some demythologize. I don't even say that, like make it normal. <laughs> like I'm not sure they were like, the Holy Spirit was just pouring out in the room and it was such an incredible worship time. I mean, maybe. I think they were choosing to do it because it was right. Okay. I think sometimes, especially maybe in our culture, maybe this is, maybe it's true, where we have to feel something for it to be real or feel okay. something for it to, to motivate me. I think they did it because it was right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and it's a weapon as well. So right. by doing what is right, they're, they're finding strength. Strength, they're resisting, they're proclaiming the gospel, they're not letting bitterness take them over, they're not letting injustice have the final say. Like, there's so much to this. Mm -hmm. And like I said in the sermon, it's so easy to preach this. Oh yeah. Like, I, I have no clue if I would be singing. Right. I have no clue. I hope I would be. Right. But I don't know. Right, right, exactly. So, uh, in the midst of that, God inhabits the praise of his people. Yep. And in this case, he demonstrates that with just a little earthquake. Uh, yeah, an earthquake, and then saves a guy from taking his life, then ends up saving him and his whole household. And what I didn't say in the message is, and all the other prisoners, and by the way, because they're in the inner cell, so they're all either insurrectionists, murderous, or rapists. Like, this is a bad place. All those people also hear the good news of Jesus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it's pretty wild. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not going to forget that easily. No. So uh, the jailer comes to Christ and he takes a risk by, by helping uh, Paul and Silas. Yeah. Like, cleaning their wounds. Yeah, having dinner with them. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mind-bending moment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. honestly. Right. And, and so it showcases involvement for us. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we should continually be prepared to be in relationship with people we should hate. Yeah, okay. I mean, if the gospel actually is what it is. Right. And that's all a part of how this church in Philippi got started. Correct. That's all a part of what made the church vibrant so that years later, Paul is still writing to them. Right. And it becomes an example for us, doesn't it? Yes, and I find it fascinating from this passage to Philippians, this interplay between joy and suffering is never lost. Right, mm -hmm. right. That gives us a lot to talk about in our groups, the things that make us joyful and the things we find hard and how God uses them all together for his glory. Mm -hmm. So we pray for your discussions that God will help you to be strong. And uh, thanks for listening to us yeah. these minutes. God bless.